All right, we can't finish talking about that uh, topic, uh, and certainly I hope that we'll continue this ni tomorrow. Many Nigerians, they mm -hmm. will have one story or the other. Exactly. To, to say. There's mm -hmm. so much to talk about as mm -hmm. far as this is concerned. Now, let's move on to the next uh, topic. Now, the debate over restructuring is not dying down anytime soon. Mm -mm, more Nigerians have continued to back the calls for re-engineering the composition of the country. And those pro-restructuring want power at the center decongested. Mm. Now, they fault the federal government's stance on the matter, pointing out that failure to restructure will further plunge Nigeria into a avoidable crisis. All right, we have joining us from our Buja studio, uh, a political analyst, uh, Jibril Yusuf. Jibril, good morning. It's good to have you join us right now. Yes, good morning, my brothers. All right. Now, first of all, let me start. The, when it, the, the name restructure, the word restructuring, a lot of people have now come to say, well, there are different kinds of restructuring, and Nigerians, the way the agitation is coming from all over the place, people can't really place their hands on what kind of restructuring Nigerians really want. Uh, when they say restructure, what really strikes you? Yes, thank you very much. <clears throat> when we say restructuring, the first thing you have to know is that there was first before restructuring, there was structuring. And to structure something, you want to put, is to put something together to organize it. When you want to restructure, it means you want to reorganize. And in terms of Nigeria, the first structuring that was done was the amalgamation in 1914. And anything that has happened to the Nigerian constitution since that time, starting from the Clifford Constitution of 1992, 1922, the Richards Constitution of 1946, the Max Fassin Constitution, the Independence Constitution, the Republican Constitution, the, the coups, 1966 of January, the coup of July 1966, all these are different forms of restructuring that has been taking place since the amalgamation, since the amalgamation in 1914 the 1979 constitution and all the other constitutions that have followed have also been one form of restructuring or the other. So what we are saying now is that the present constitution that we are operating, which was given to us in 1999 by the military on their exit from formal governance, also has to be restructured. And what has happened is that the present Nigerian constitution has packed all the powers in the country in the hands of the federal government. And what is being said is that let some of these powers be released to the lower levels of government, particularly the state governments and the local governments. And that is what is meant by devolution. Jim Brain. Another aspect of restructuring that people are talking about okay. is also the reorganization of the territorial units that make up the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Presently, we have 36 states. If you add the Federal Capital Territory, we have 37. And we have about 768 local governments and six area councils in FCT. All right, because of that, let me, come in. The... let me come in here now and ask you another question so that we can get um, more uh, ideas into the topic, really. Uh, well, the move by restructuring got frustrated by the National Assembly recently when they didn't give uh, good attention to uh, devolution of power. So moving away from that, the call for restructuring at this time now has given many people from different ethnic groups in the country opportunity to say that, yes, they want to be recognized because they have been feeling marginalized in the past. So I want to ask you now, one of the groups is uh, Okun people in Kwara State. Do you think they are better off uh, in Kwara than in Kogi State? And what is behind the Okun agenda? Well, uh, Okun people are not in Kwara State now. We are in Kogi State. And you know the agitation for Okun people 
the agitation by Okun people to get out of Kogi State. Oh, Jibril, can you still hear us? Can you confirm that uh, you can hear us? Yes, I'm hearing you. Aha, uh -huh, fine. Yeah, you, you, you were saying you were saying something. Go ahead. Yes, that the agitation by Okun people for restructuring is a subsisting issue. It has been on even before independence, and every opportunity has been used by the Okun people to raise the issue that the colonialists did not ask us whether we want to be where we were partitioned to be or not. If you look at it, our kit and kin are in the southwestern part of the country. And it is a natural law of community life that people want to go to areas where people speak their language, where their brothers and sisters are. That is the basis of the agitation by the Okun people for Magia with uh, Southwest. But this may take a number of forms. One, we have been demanding for a long time that Okun people in Kogi states should be carved into a state. We don't want to be matched with any state. We don't want to be matched with Ekiti state or Odo state or any other state to form uh, to form that, that state. We want to be carved into a state and become like other states in the southwestern part of the country. Another form is to see if Okun people can join hands with the Yoruba people in Kwara state to form a state to be merged with the southwestern part of the country. This has been the candle of our agitation over a very long time. It is not new. We are just renew that call, that demand for restructuring. And to us in, uh, in Okun land, the, the meaning of restructuring is if we are carved into a state and matched with southwestern part of the country. Okay. Okay, well, the, the Okun is just one of those. We still have so many other uh, ethni eth ethnicities within Nigeria. The Ige, the people in Benue State, the T people also in Benue State who have some of their kindreds in other states and all of that. That we, we won't have time to dwell on all of those. But let yes. me ask you, if, if the restructuring based on that, like you talked about the Okun people now, is to be listened to, it means yes. we'll be having states of, yes. of ethni ethnic states in the country, is that really healthy for the kind of Nigeria and unity that we are looking for and talking about? No, that is not what we are saying. You yourself, you know that it is not possible to cap Nigeria into, uh, into states on the basis of ethnicity. Many ethnic groups are so small that they cannot form a state, but any group that is in a place where it does not like, should have a right to say, I don't like where I am. I want to go to somewhere else. And many people have been accusing some of us of using the ethnic principle. It is not true. It is not possible to carve Nigeria into as many states as the ethnic groups in Nigeria. Economically, it is not viable. So, but a, a, a community of people like the Okun people in Kogi state, who have their kit and kin in another state, should be allowed to go to that state, to go to that part of the country. That is where they will feel they are safe. That is where they will feel they belong. And that is where their real sense of belonging can actually be fostered. Don't you think the strength of Nigeria is a unity in diversity, that you don't have to be staying with your kindred before you feel safe or before you uh, leave wherever? Uh, don't you think it, you don't have to come to the southwestern part of the region or be merged with any state or stand alone and be called a southwestern state before you thrive in Nigeria? Yes, uh, thank you very much. That depends on what each group of Nigerians perceive. In public, in public life, perception is the most important factor. 
if a group of people are in a particular place and they feel that they are not safe for whatever reason, it is better they are allowed to go to where they feel safe, where they feel they belong. And that is the case of the, of the Okun people in Kogi State now. And that agitation has been on for a long time before independence. All right. If we have to take the first step from where we are now, if we assume the president wants to uh, take up the issue of uh, restructuring, where really should we start from as a people? Yes. Yes. Uh, the first thing is uh, the president should convene either a constituent assembly or another national conference where all Nigerians, all groups of Nigerians can go and place their demand for whatever they want out of the country. That should be the starting point. But Nigeria just uh, conducted a national conference in, in 2014, 2014 that has not even been looked into. And then the Senate called the executive to send reports uh, to it for assessment, uh, to be able to consider some of them for, to restructure Nigeria. But if you're calling for another confab again, you think the country is even focused in trying to solve its internal problem and chart a new course for it? Well, if we, if we want to go back to 2014 Constitutional Conference report, fine. But you remember that there are very many other grievances that were not embodied in that report. Two, remember also that the members of that uh, conference were not elected. We are looking for a, a conference whose members, at least majority of its members, are elected. And therefore, they have authority to make requests, to make demand uh, for their communities. All right, uh, I guess we have to leave it here now. Uh, Jibril mm -hmm. Yusuf, thank you very much for talking to us on TBC Breakfast. We hope that uh, time will much. come for us to still dwell thank on this because uh, there are so many aspects of this we need to talk about. Developing, sorry, an ongoing discussion. Thank Indeed. you very much.